Okay. You asked for it, you get it. Ryu and I will rip your photos into smithereens. Hold on to your headphones. Here comes the pain. Um, yeah, because, uh, you know, it's a bit of an extra thing today because Matt was really pissed off about the Chicago Tribune versus Chicago Sun Times Cubs World Series and fucking David Carson. Um, if you want to know what we're talking about, there should be a video about this on our YouTube page, but I'm sure you probably will know. Um, please go to youtube.com, um, search for Big Lens Fast Shutter. That's it, not calm. Big Lens Fast Shutter. And uh, it will be on one of our archives. We just kind of recorded. Um, it is a whole story about the fiasco of the Chicago Sun-Times versus Chicago Tribune Cubs World Series victory photo. But let's don't get into that because there's a fucking rabbit hole. So we go to Simon West. Yes, that Jewish man who got rear-ended two weeks ago. What do you think about this photo? Uh, I do not enjoy this photo. I really, I, I like great. how I like how the three players on the you know on the right side going you know more towards the left are you know decreasingly in focus as they get towards the right. Uh, that would have been fine by itself, but the way that the scrum is cut off on the left and the you know, like the almost square crop of this it just makes it really awkward. And I think on top of that, like, I don't like the fact that the background is so busy as well, you know? I really don't like it. The referee standing over there, right, you know, in front of number nine, and it just looks like a really awkward, 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 awkward picture. Um, yeah, th this is when you, you know, when you get stuck looking at an element of your picture that's cool, and then you forget that there's other stuff going on that's working way, way against it. Yeah. So Simon, no, it's not a good picture. So you fucked up. <laughs> you fucked up, Simon. You fucked up a little bit. Not miserable. Not like this guy. The Amernat. I don't know what what happened. What yeah, this is something this better. Is... This I is a disaster. Is That's really bad. It's really bad. It's fucking shit. That is really terrible. terrible yeah. Terrible, so terrible humans situation. generally aren't green unless there's something <laughs> really, really wrong with them. Um, so the first thing is figure out how to take a white balance reading. Uh, auto white balance is not going to save you. There are lots of situations that auto white balance just cannot help you. And it, whether it's a court that's throwing off a color cast or old lights that are cycling at different color temperatures, um, you can't you can't do this. Like yeah. you you cannot rely on auto white balance to to fix it. Like you have to start shooting and then look, figure out what's going on, and then either adjust manually or take a reading or use a white card or something like that but you can't do this this is not what photography looks like um beyond that it wouldn't have mattered if you got all of that right <laughs> i don't think it would have mattered at all this is very awkward the best part of this picture are the uh the guys in uniform in the background are they uh is this in india or something i think so it's davis cop so i'm just I'm yeah uh, it's uh, it's someone in. Yeah, but uh, there were better pictures back there than than this. Um, you know, you can't cut somebody off at the knees like that. Uh, you know, your choices are, you know, the full body, which is you know going to be fairly boring, or you know, really tight when he's hitting the ball or something like that. But you're caught in no man's land with the crop. You're caught in no man's land with where the ball is um where his racket is like th th this doesn't look athletically this guy's a professional tennis player who has a clothing deal and is playing in the davis cup and you know this guy looks worse than you know the any guy that you just go around the corner and see on the tennis court so uh, <coughs> you know, your job is to make these people look like the great athletes that they are and you're making them look like you know just some dude so not good 
Um, the guy who actually shot this, I'm assuming is David Ferrer. Um, if you're interested in actually doing, um, because I think if you just like kind of started shooting uh, sports for because of the horrendous quality of this picture, um, I suggest that we go and do the, do the, the other easy part of um, training ground if you're interested in that, if we're, we won't be as harsh as this. But I just mind you, this is a terrible, 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 terrible picture. So moving right along. Deborah, um, it's fine. There, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. There's absolutely, absolutely nothing wrong with it. So this shouldn't be here, Deborah. You should know this. No, this is like this is the whole deal. When we see a picture that's actually good, or there's nothing really major to be like nothing really horrendously wrong. Basically, like it's just you know good. Well, there isn't there isn't anything horrendously wrong with this, and it, I agree that it doesn't need to be here, but. It's out of balance because of the gap on the right hand side. So when you're yeah. composing or when you're cropping or whatever, you need to take that into account. Like the the only reason that you would leave that space is if there was something visually interesting that was going on there, and there isn't I here, think right? Like a bike in front of that, you know. I think I can see like the you know to the far right. Right. Like so you of, uh, right. So you crop it. You crop it to the the guy in, ye in yellow fluorescent to his helmet and then you're fine. But it's this, you know, you see, so if you look at the, the right edge, there's dirt. And if you look at the left edge, there's the guy in the black, just, you know, just crop it differently. It would be fine. Yeah. No, that shouldn't be here, Deborah. This on the other hand should be here. Um, yeah. It, Deborah, I mean, like for anyone who's basically like been here for more than a couple of months, it's very, very important that you start developing skills uh, and skills of looking at a picture and thinking, mm, that fucking sucks, and just immediately deleting it. Because there's no saving, you know, some of these pictures. It's, it sucks, it sucks, it sucks. It really just sucks. There's nothing more to it. So um, if, you, if you look at the, you know, the, the last picture and you look at this one, you have... Um, much better light in the other one, much less distracting background in the other one. And people doing, you know, the moves that they're making were more extreme. Like they were in a turn, the, uh, you know, the bikes were at a much harsher angle to the ground here. The lights really bad because it was early in the day or, you know, midday. Um, it, you know, he, his foot is out. It makes it look like he's really not even moving at all and then you have the two guys in the background at weird angles and then the tent so the tent you know the, the 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 light the tent the other riders all of that stuff is working against the picture whereas in the other one everything was working together like all those riders were entering the turn together they were at extreme angles there was dirt kicking up and the light was falling on the scene in a way that made it more interesting and this has none of those things so um you know, Deborah, definitely go back and look at those two pictures and try to make the choices that you made in the first picture and then apply them to the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, ba -la -ba 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 -ba. So, <laughs> Jules Winfield, um, I think I read it briefly on the, the Flickr.com big lens fast shutter group page saying that this p kind of you know moved the camera in a way that was you know so it's a bit off like it's not straight and he says does it work or not and definitely does not work at all um yeah you can't I you think, cannot cut people off at the angles that's never you know this guy looks like a pirate <laughs> you know like walking around on two peg legs you can't do that yeah i mean i think you have to like <laughs> Just have a look at this photo and tell me whether or not it doesn't look awkward. If you're going to like cut people's things off, it has to be in general principle. I'm not saying this is like it works every single time. It has to be at the waist, first of all, or nothing at all. And you cannot cut people with the legs because it doesn't look very, very good. And as for the horizon not being straight, it doesn't work either. Um, I had seen uh, photographers in the past try to do this on purpose and it rarely 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 works 
in most cases, it, you just, it just doesn't work because just looking at it makes you feel a bit weird because of the fact that things are not straight. And a lot of people probably don't even like kind of recognize and realize that they're a bit obsessive about things not being straight. And the human mind really kind of like, you know, brain really tells you like, oh, there's something wrong with it inherently because of the fact that things are not straight because we don't see our world in this way, you know, being crooked. So no, it doesn't work. And Jules, yeah, this is also a bad picture. Man. It's bad. All right, Michael, and there's the other one by Jules. Yeah, this doesn't need to be here. No, it doesn't. I wish there was that that gap between was not there, but no, I'm f I'm totally fine with that. I, I'm fine with this picture. I don't like that gap. <laughs> Reed is taking a picture of horses now. It's very <laughs> new. This is fine too. Yeah, I don't like the fact that she has her eyes closed, but you know, it's fine. it's fine. Um, this is not fine. Wow. Is it even focus? No. What's in focus? Nothing. I think that part's in focus. No. No? Can I can I zoom in? Yeah, that part's in focus. See. So, the rest is. Mm -hmm. So Matt Cohen, what's wrong with this picture? Uh, it's. I mean, it's first of all, it's boring as shit. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't understand the, um, so when you're, again, when you're panning, you have to pan, like this isn't, uh, I, I just, I, yeah, this, the light is bad. The color is off the, you know, when you have something, um, you know, we can argue about whether that side is in focus or not, but what you're looking at is the car and the Simmons and the driver and whatever, and those things aren't in focus. And the pan is too short. So, you know, the background, you still have those lights, um, you know, looking awkward in the background like that. Um, you know, I don't, it, it's a bad angle. It's not low enough to really be interesting and the car isn't really doing anything interesting because even though i've seen this kind of racing before so i know that it's pretty crazy that the wheels aren't going in the same direction and as the car is going and it's drifting around the corners you're not showing that because you can't really tell that this is even the corner the, you know the the track looks straight this looks like part of the straightaway it doesn't even really look like the corner so um you know you want to be shooting in the corner where you can show that the car is completely sideways maybe that's more interesting maybe um i don't know it's just not yeah it's pretty kind of hard to like kind of pinpoint exactly like what's wrong with that picture in a sense of like the fact that it's fucking boring and it really is like matt says it's a very boring picture and i have to agree it is a very very boring picture um, a lot of times when you, when you put the subject in the middle of this thing, it does actually, like, I actually find it quite boring. Um, but yeah, it's like some pictures, like it's, it's beyond comprehension how boring it is. And that's exactly what it is. It's, it's as if like, it, oh my God, like it's not really doing anything. Like it really, really isn't, you know, like, oh my God, it's very hard to say why uh, it's just a very boring picture. Yeah, well, and, you know, it, again, yeah, you like can it's have... The same thing over and over and over, right? It's like one of those things stuff that you would probably see over and over and over. And over. Right, I mean, the, these tracks are very short, and they go around them many times. So I, I think, yeah, I'd be really surprised if they went around less than 20 times. So you have many chances to shoot even in the same race, and there's probably heats and finals and semifinals and all of that. So, you know, you have to... You have to know where you are. So it's dark and the light is directional. Figure out how to use the light. Figure out how to use the track. Um, this is like, this is a phone picture. You know, th this is standing up. It's, uh, you know, eye level. And it's just, it's not, you're not doing anything that is calling attention to why this, sh you know, should even be a photograph. It's just, 
you know, it's a frame from a video. Oh, dear. I'm okay with it. I, I don't like the fact that, like, the, I don't like that right leg on the ground for some reason. And it just... I'm fine with it. I got it's yeah. not like a, it's horrendously wrong. You know? No, it's fine. No, it's fine. Um, there's no reason that it shouldn't be cropped tighter. Like you know, those extra inches of the ad boards and the extra inches of the grass. Um, you know, you don't need that stuff. Like this picture would have more impact if it was cropped tighter, like most pictures. And you know, honestly, you gotta relax with that watermark. You know, it's super distracting when you have something like that. Like if you just had text or whatever, that's fine. But it, you know, the, your watermark is a shovel, and uh, it it's just completely distracting in this. You know, in in pictures like this, completely distracting. Yeah, it is. It really is. Oh, let's go on. I like the sun. I like this little silhouette thing going on, but it really looks like just kids going home. Because <laughs> there's nothing sports related about this one. And that's that's the main problem that I have. I like the foliage and I like the sun and the cloud and the flare and everything, but not too sporty, you know? No. And I, I don't like the angle of it. I don't like the you know, like the direction they're going and how that lines up with the edges of the frame. Um, I but mean, you could have used like the the, it, it, the, uh, the the shadows as well huh? in this kind of situation. Yeah, I you know this I would have liked this better if it was closer and you know still wide. You know, like if he had gone up to the edges of the shadows or something like that. I mean, you know, it's it's an interesting use of light and it's fine. Um, yeah, I don't but mean that. I think it, it doesn't it it doesn't get over the it doesn't get over the hurdle of, is it a sports photograph? This isn't It's clearly not a sports photograph. Like I, I don't care if those girls are in uniform or whatever, if it's not identifiable that it's a sports picture, then it's not a sports picture. I mean, if they were lined up over there and they were, you know, using the ball. So or, you know, or you could the see ball. that they were carrying lacrosse sticks or if there were lacrosse goals yeah. on either side of them or something like that. But you have to have some kind of cues, uh, Otherwise, it's, you know, it's just, yeah, like Reese said, it's just people walking home in a line. Scott. I don't like the, I, I understand why he used this angle, but if, you, <coughs> if you're going to use this angle, that would actually have made it even higher. It's a very awkward angle. Yeah, it's, you know, it's that three-quarter zone that we try to warn people off of all the time. You know, it's it's just you have to really be doing something to make a picture like that look interesting. And, you know, I've shot in situations like this where you have a dirt road or a dirt path or something, or even if it was concrete or something, you have to try and minimize. Like if you're if the point of this picture is nature and this guy's running through nature or something like that, and you have to figure out a way to minimize the the trail and the trail is like uh, you know 30 percent of the picture that's it, it takes away from the beauty of it like you have these you know grassy hills and rocks and a lake or whatever and a guy doing something athletic um look how much better the trail looks on the left edge you know like the part that's way lower than this that's what you want a trail to look like. You don't want a trail to look like the one that he's running on because it's, it's, it's just not aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> you have to figure out a way to minimize that part of it and arrange the frame so that the frame is aesthetically pleasing and that 30% of the frame isn't. And, you know, does that mean that you could have uh, done it right here? No, maybe not because he's not even running next to the edge of it. So it would have been very difficult, but if you had shot from much lower and shot from, uh, you know, directly on his side, you could have gotten rid of a lot of that and had way more of the background in the picture. Maybe, maybe at this spot you lose the lake and then it's, you know, you're back to 
it not being as aesthetically pleasing as it could be, but the way you did it here is not aesthetically pleasing to me. I mean, first of all, I don't like how his legs are. Like, it's just not a good, you know, like it's, it's all about body form and how beautiful the body looks. And that's not a good moment in a running motion. So that's a no-no first. Second of all, like the whole, you know, Matt was saying this is like the bad angles. I think it's terrible. If you want to incorporate the, uh, I think because like the main, you know, the main, main thing on this entire thing is the lake and how beautiful it is. You could use a different angle. I could have basically like had something attached to a camera and maybe shot even directly above the runners. And you could basically see the lake on the top half and you can have the trail, anything but this. Um, but, you know, you live and learn. You have a shitty picture and this weird guy running, but you just have to do a better job next time. And when in an event like this, when there's a lot of people kind of, I mean, you're not the only person running, I hope. Um, then it's just like a, a you know, weekend warrior thing. Um, you have many chances to do this. So think about it. You need to think a bit more about how you can actually execute this and not just like say, oh, there's a runner coming. I'm just going to take a shot because it's beautiful to go over there. I'm just going to get that whole thing in. It doesn't always necessarily you know, work out. And also you can think about using a tighter, you know, like longer length as well, if you really want that look in the picture and get something in with the runner as well. No, but I hate these photos, you know, like ugh. skiing, snowboarding, cycling, everything is so small. <laughs> yeah, and... this is like, this is, but this is how it's done, you know, in, in these fields. Like if you open up the magazine that covers, you know, uh, trail so running or tall. snowboarding or whatever, you know, there's like this gigantic mountain and this tiny little guy and you have to like kind of search for him or something like that it's like fucking worth but, well though you don't like it. right but but here's the thing this kind of thing is no different from a two picture and a ball kind of picture where it's just it's become so conventional that it's not interesting anymore and so everybody has seen all these pictures like in you know the, because it's like the default aesthetic for this kind of thing like i think people have heard me talk about that before like when you're shooting bowl skateboarding you use a uh or half pipes or something like that you use a fish eye to show like how much air they're getting or something like that and that's all fine but if you're doing this to express yourself and you're trying to stand out from everybody else you have to figure out a different way to do it because for me i'm looking at this picture and i see a landscape with a dude in it and that dude isn't doing anything exceptional in, you know, in this picture, like, yes, in the totality of running up and down this, this mountain or something like that, that's impressive, but that's not what you're showing. You're showing him in one place and with flat lighting like this and a blue Jersey that he's wearing that, you know, kind of bumps up against the gray of the rock and the green of the moss and the grass and the rocks. Um, he doesn't stand out enough. I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't shoot any of this kind of thing. So I don't know what the, um, you know, what the answer is, if, you know, for any given shoot. But what I do know is that stop getting caught up in how everybody else is, you know, shooting this crazy wide angle and the, you know, the person's <laughs> like 2% of the frame or something like that. Like, it's just... I just, I don't want to see it. You know, you might yeah. sell some of these and that's fine, but it's not interesting to me. And I think we wanted to put the waterfall in there, which doesn't really do well. And there's that big, you know, green bush in the left. And there, I think there are other angles you could have used. Like I was like, just looking at this, like I could just use the entire steps. And because that's actually going down, you could just like use that to just kind of- Yeah, like, shoot it straight on. Shoot him, you know, shoot him coming right at you. Be, be somewhere where you can be- as absolutely close to him as you can and still get some of the steps in there. Um, that would have been way, that's a way more impactful kind of picture than this. Oh, Varo. No, I mean, when you, when you see just like a dude walking around in the back and other dudes standing around and watching and, um, you know, like, I don't, I don't even mind, 
the way that they're cut off here because it's it, it almost works like the because the one who's in focus you can see your foot the other one can be cut off like that i'm totally fine with that but there's a time and a place to do that and that time is when the background isn't like this like when you see that background like i want you to stop before you set up and say and I've said this before, what's the best thing that can happen in this situation and what's the worst thing? The best thing is they're pretty close to you and you can do a lot when people are that close. You can shoot with, you know, a longer lens and get like a, you know, really good close up of them or you can shoot wide and, um, you know, show how long their strides are or something like that. Like there's a lot of different things that you can do. But if you're looking at this scene and you see the infield is where it is and there's not like, you know, a long jump pit or something like that there. But, you know, it's just a place where anybody with a credential can walk around. Chances are you're going to get screwed and it's not going to be your fault, but it you're going to have to deal with it. So I, I don't know. Like, it is difficult to shoot this kind of thing, but you have to start looking for the positions where the background's not going to be as distracting as this. You just can't have dudes walking around with their hands in their pockets when you're trying to show people doing crazy athletic things and it's it's really you know it's one of those things that i don't think they probably teach you that much but background is very very important when it comes to sports um because you really want your eyes to concentrate on what's happening to the main subject which is which are the runners and that's what you want people to look at but if you start making really small mistakes i let it be like the fucking hand on the left or let it be like the the dude in the green walking around or anything really really small that distracts you from the entire you know from, from the actual you know thing that you want to show people then it's a no-no and you should know when you look through the viewfinder that's what you're going to get and you're going to tell yourself okay this is not a good angle i'm going to change i'm going to probably go into the infield i'm going to go down the track and see, see if there's a better angle would there be like no distracting backgrounds but you should be thinking about these things all the time. And I, I keep on saying, uh, this is really not a, it's, the sports life is not for stupid people. You know what I mean? Like it really isn't. And there's a lot of thought that goes into really good sports photographs. And honestly, honestly, I think fashion and weddings and all these things where you can basically ask people to do shit more than once or portraits, it's far easier than doing sports. Because sports is a matter of like, you know, obviously there's luck involved, but at the same time, there's a lot of calculation involved in your head. And it should be, and you should really understand that because it really isn't a dumb person's, you know, type of spot. Uh, I think they're sleepy for some reason. It's fine, Tony. Like, this is fine. Yeah, this doesn't need to be. Does it. Yeah, it's not good. Oh, wow. My, I like the fact that it's, but the, the other thing doesn't really do it though. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I like the ball as the station, you know, it's moving, but the background sucks. Guys are not really doing anything interesting. Who's moving? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. It, it is, it's that, that's the best word for it. It's unfortunate because it is interesting and it's definitely like, mm -hmm. if you were scrolling through, you would definitely stop in this picture and oh, yeah, try yeah, to yeah. figure out what was going on. But yeah, it's uh, I don't know how I wonder how hard it is to focus on the ball in a. I think it's double exposure. No, no, no. it's not. It's not as I thought it was because the leg was. No, yeah, I, this is you know this this all comes down to the background, um, and it's unlucky. Yeah. I would try. I would play around with this picture because I don't think that it's. I don't think that's a total loss. I think that if you crop it down, because you know the guy's the head should be in the center as well. You know, don't you think? Yeah, the, the guy's heads. The, the guy's heads cut off on the left anyway, so cropping it down to his chest isn't going to make any difference one way or the other. And then, you know, play around with the crop on the bottom as well. Um, you know, there might still be something there. It's. It's just, you know, again, like, you know, those boards in the background, that sucks, but that is something that you have to deal with every time that you're out there. And if you're trying to make an interesting picture like this, but you didn't, 
pan or you know your shutter wasn't slow enough to like completely blur out the background because you still need to be able to get the ball whatever's yeah. in the background is still in the picture so yeah because if you slow it down you more and everything's gonna like yeah gonna be you know yeah it's yeah it's 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 a hard problem to solve you know what i would try to do is try to make this picture on the practice field and and this might even be practice because they're you know they're wearing yeah, pennies, it is but it's practice. Yeah, I don't you know some team has to practice in an open field somewhere, um, or with a better background than this. And I would try yeah. this again. Like I know it's not easy. It's worth having, and it's worth having a good version of it if you can't yeah. uh, rehabilitate this frame. I would I would stick with it. You need a lot of luck with this one. Yeah. yeah. Um. I think it could be better with a better cropping. It really bothers me that handle there on the right, his his left hand. It really, really does, and uh, his right hand as well. Huh? That much cut off. Mm. I'm it, not. I, I'm not. I'm not really all that bothered. Really? I, yeah. Because I love the light, though. I, I love, yeah. I love that. Light. Well, that's why I think it's good enough to overcome it. Like, I'm not saying that it wouldn't be better if you, you know, you, if you figured out, like, I don't know, try to, try to, I'm not worried about his right hand at all. Like that, you know, that little tiny mm -hmm. sliver or whatever. I'm just yeah. not worried about that. The left hand, I don't know, you know, can you crop it down to, you know, where his, um, you can, you can, you can, where his sleeve is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, that's what I would do. I would just, I would crop it to his fingertips on his right hand and where the sleeve meets the skin on the left arm and be done with it. I mean, this is, this is well done um, as far as lighting goes and um, you know, the choice to, to wait until this point to, you know, so that the light was right over his shoulder like that. Um, I, I'm just going to guess that it was a little bit unlucky that his hand, you know, by the time he got there that his hand couldn't fit in there, but there, you can save this picture, no, no question about it. It's Tom's unfortunate photos of the month. I'm fine with this. Yeah, this is fine. By the way, when we say fine, it means it's okay. All right, so it's not like we're fucking giving you like this full mark of his one most good, most maybe sports star if you ever rushed in your life. I'm just so you know. No, it's you know they throw. In, in any given football game, one team is going to throw 20 or 30 passes. Another team might throw 30 or 40 passes. You have lots of chances. You camp out in the end zone. You're going to get one like this. Um, you've done it now, so what's next is what I would say. Like You just don't need the over-the-shoulder catch with the eyes or whatever um, of two high school players or something. You just don't need that, like the, the market for it, you know. <laughs> You're not going to have more than one of these in your portfolio. You're not going to sell a bunch of these to a newspaper. You're not going to sell a bunch of these to the kids. Um, so you've done it. Now move on to something that's more interesting than this. Wow, oh, Scott's like using really shitty camera with like, oh, it's really shitty light on. Like, yeah. uh, noise is really bad on this one. It yeah, like you know. Like made in 2010 or something, you know? <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. taking, taking like the, you know, image quality out of it or whatever, he got a little bit unlucky because of the way her hair is coming across her face and her hand. It makes it look, you know, probably more awkward than intense. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to know what your gear can do, right? Everybody shoots in situations where their gear just isn't up to it. Um, this is this is a, a gym that doesn't have good enough lighting. So you either need to light it or you need to get lenses with a faster um, maximum aperture or you need to not shoot action and just shoot things where you can drop the shutter enough to do it. But uh, this isn't a not like if this was the best exposure that you could do, you, you weren't getting anything good because even if something good happened, it was still going to look dingy and there wasn't really going to be any fixing it later on. It's the moment itself is fine. Like it's, you know, you were definitely, this is when we talk about getting low, 
this is what we're talking about. Like he was laying down, like this wasn't, yeah. you know, this wasn't kneeling or something like that. He was laying down. And I want to see more of that because good things happen when you shoot this low witness this, right. The, the reflection on the floor would have been good if there was enough light and he got low enough that when something happened on the floor, he was at floor level instead of looking down at it. Like all of that stuff is good, but the light, you know, we were talking before about how he didn't cross the bar of it being a sports photograph. This one doesn't cross the bar being enough light to make a picture that's, you know, not really dingy looking. So, you know, you, you have to not kill the picture before it even gets made. And when you walk into a situation where somebody's not doing anything athletic, it's going to be very difficult to make a sports picture. And we walk into a gym that's too dark for the gear that you have it's going to be very difficult to make any kind of a picture, um, you know, action wise. So, um, you know, either put up a couple strobes or speed lights or, you know, maybe don't shoot action and shoot behind the scenes stuff where you need a much slower shutter speed and you can bring the exposure up to where it needs to be. But this is just, you know, dark and dingy is not good for pictures. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not too crazy about this. So, I'm just going to move on. Jesus. Yeah. It's the, this is, the, this the is, green guy. It's the second. second yeah, guy. this is this is so bad. And, you know, we were talking about how the background would have been more interesting with those guys in the, uniform, in the army uniforms or whatever they were in. That's kind of what I had in mind. But this with the railing and the people with all the, you know, the reason the other one was interesting is because they were all wearing uniforms. This is not interesting because they're all wearing different things and they're not wearing the Jersey of the team. They're not wearing uniforms or not, you know, so what, you know, what he's the guy that took this, what he's thinking is um, the guy in front is out of focus. And then the guy behind him and the other guy are looking up at where the ball is. Isn't that interesting? Well, it would be, if the color wasn't off and the other part of the background wasn't so distracting and there wasn't a signboard in front of them, but all of those things are working against it. So you're trying to make this, you know, cute little, uh, you know, ironic kind of picture or something like that, but everything in the picture is working against it because you have to do so much work to mentally filter out the, all those people that aren't cheering. They're not doing anything. Those green bars, um, and, you know, and then that signboard in the front and then the fact that the whole thing is green is just working against it. There's, there's no saving this. Oh, my God. You guys are just... That's, that's good. It's, <laughs> this, doesn't need, this doesn't need to be here. That's also good. This doesn't need to be here. This is a great picture. Yeah, it's very, very good. Yeah, I don't want to get back into a situation where we're having people showing off in training ground. Like, they, very clearly, neither of the last two pictures have needed to be in training ground at all. No, no, no. So. Very, 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 very. Who is this? I don't know. This is a new guy, Michael Zikowski. So right. sure. It's UFC. Well, it's um, MMA is very big. I don't know. Um, it's in Poland. Like, MMA is very big. Yeah, I hope he actually sent us more stuff. He's very good, this guy. No, it doesn't work. I think left works, and but the right doesn't work. Because that guy on the right just doesn't, like, he's not really doing anything enough, you know? Um, if I have to get, like, really specific, the fact that, like, his head is cut off over there, it doesn't really do anything. Um, we have someone who is on the left going into towards the block, and you have the people the, on the other side. The, uh, the other He's not really doing anything. And if the the guy who is on the no, on the right side, and if you can see his face, facial expression, something that would have been interesting. Because you basically kind of like set up the rule with this one already with the guy on the left. Like, look at this guy. He's running with a ball. He's going towards the this, you know, divider thing that you basically set up. 
And there's this guy on the right. You, you cannot see his face. And that really bothers me. And that's why this doesn't work. Good try. Um, it it is a good to... shot. It's it's yeah. worth it's worth trying again. Um, yeah, I know it's it going to be really difficult to do that, but the not having the guy in the right space and it is that's a deal breaker. Yeah. Even if it was out of focus, even if you know, it just still it would have been better than that. I have no idea what this guy is doing, and that's what really bothers me. And just the overall balance, like the stuff that's actually like on the right, upper right, that's not filled out. I doesn't really, I don't really like it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not wild about this. I, I think that it would have been. The problem is you can't really tell because you can't see the expressions. You know, are they getting yelled at? Is he upset because they lost or something like that? But mm. I would, it would have been better if you were lower, and so you had to kind of look up through those other players to get to him having you be at eye level with him kind of lessens the impact of the whole thing. And also, like, if you're shooting any sort of emotion, you don't want us to guess what this guy is feeling. It has to be absolutely certain, A, he's happy, or B, he's sad. There's only, like, there's, basically, there's only two. So if we have no idea what the guy is going, what he's thinking, and you're actually doing this, you actually like sending this photo because he had an expression because he's feeling something, your picture has to tell us exactly what is going in like through his head. And to me, this one is just confusion. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Looks like he's sad, looks like he's just grimacing, you don't know. But if he's sad, he has to like be you can see the tears, or maybe you can actually see like he's actually wiping his, his eyes, something. That indicates there is he is in an emotional state, happy or sad or whatever. But it has to be either black or white. You cannot be in the gray. Okay. So, it's fine. It's a bit too like a movie, you know, type of thing. Um. I wish I could see a bit more water being disrupted, but it doesn't really seem to be that. Do you care? I care that there, you know, there should be at least an outline of light on her face, but you know, it's it's okay. It's uh, you know, I'm not going to kill it for that, but it's not, you know, it's it's um, I don't know. It's good, but not great. Yeah, I do kind of find it a bit boring. I think kind of going back to that uh, picture that we saw, like it just kind of feels that you could have done a lot more with this lighting. Like it's a beautiful, 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 beautiful light. And I don't think you've maximized the whole thing. The only way you basically maximized it is the fact that you cropped it in a way that you wanted to basically show as much water as possible. And no, I don't think it really works that well. I just feel like it's, it's you could have done a lot more with this lighting. And if you have another chance like this, think about it a bit more, you know? Think about it, how, how much more beautiful can you actually make this? Um, if like what Matt was saying, like if you want the, uh, the face of the girl, something on, on her head, just wait for her to basically turn her head or you get her from a different angle. If you want everything symmetrical, I understand, but I just kind of think there's, there could have been a bit more done with this entire image. Um, just having her smack in the middle, it just doesn't really work for me. Even if I said it was okay, it's not good enough. I love it. Love it. It's great. Do you care? Yes no, no? it doesn't need to be. It's great. It's great. It's great. I don't care for it, really. There's nothing really. No super bad about it is that very interesting no it's just you know they're what we're doing we're making still photos and it matters the timing of when you choose to make the photo and you know it's it happens very quickly and you have to work on your timing but when the ball when the ball's been kicked and it's already cleared both of the players 
you know, it's too late. It's just too late. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. By the way, indifference is also not a good thing either, uh, you know. So yeah. I would rather actually like re really shit your picture. Because you try something very, very new, it didn't work out. Yeah, at least give you a bit more effort points for it. And say, hey, next time you do it, do it again. And you can take a better picture than what you've actually done. But we praise you for trying something new. But if it's a very indifferent photo, like such as this, like, I think it's even worse because it just is. In, so in, in physics, there's potential, potential energy and then kinetic energy. Kinetic is when something's already happening. Potential is where it's stored up and waiting for what's going to happen next. So think about that. Like this isn't kinetic because the ball's already away. He's just falling through on his kick, which isn't interesting. Potential would be before he kicked the ball. Kinetic would be while he's kicking the ball or when the ball is still very close to his foot. But all of that has been exhausted and it's just, you know, like the recoil now. Um, it's, you know, it's not good enough. It, yes, the first time, whatever, but... Um, you know, none of that, none of that stuff matters. It's timing, timing. And it's basically the quality of picture, but no one would care what you write on it. No, this doesn't need to be here at all. <laughs> wow, why do you put it here? It's bad. Yeah, it's, What's it's boring. Bad. I think it's just like, mm -hmm. the horizon's crooked. Um, these two yeah. guys are not doing anything very exciting and it's played on a football American football pitch and not a football football pitch which is really, really drives me crazy yeah okay, scroll down to the metadata real quick um, so f4 at 150 is not gonna be 159 is not gonna be is it's not gonna isolate the action it's not gonna blur out the background that's not a good place to be. So if you're limited, if, if this is a 70 to 200 F4 and that's the best you can do, then you need to be shooting at 200 all the time and you need to be shooting things that are closer to you because all, that background, far. yeah, it's just, you're just too far away. Like look, look at the background and look how you can see everything that's going on. You can see the individual leaves on the tree. You can see that card of hurdles in the background and the corner flag. Um, that's too much. Like you, you, you need to isolate all of that stuff. And so the way that the field works is that if you, if you don't have a fast enough aperture, you need to get really close to what you're shooting to be able to blur it all out. And if you're at, you know, even if you were at 200, it still wouldn't be blurring it out enough, but because you're all the way down at 159, you really need to be close to, to even have a chance to blur that stuff out. Um, other, you know, again, the horizon is off and it's not what they're doing isn't at that point interesting. So you need to work on your timing as well. Mm. I don't mind anything other than like the, the technical, you know, the, the way the, the I light is beautiful. This, this whole part is beautiful. Right. It's just, right. Serious. It's just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Right. It's just, it's um, yeah. And, and the, no, I'm, I'm fine with the picture. It's just, it just needs to be like crisper. It's just, it's dingy the way, the way that it is. So it should have been, you know, bring the exposure up and I don't know if it's especially in focus either. But you know, as far as like, yeah, it's in for it's focus here. Oh, oh it's geez. just it's just super noise reduced. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. I mean, okay. the thing is, like, I think Reed probably takes better football pictures than he does with bicycles. Because this is really like you know, I'm I'm kind of taking a step back. It's a good photo. It really is. No, it's yeah, right. Photo. So so it has like the things that we're looking for. It has that Atmospheric. absolute black yeah. background. It has. Um, you know, the way the, the turf is fading out into the black and, um, you know, even that white line is working with it because it's kind of like taking your eye right to it and then taking it off into the black. Um, you know, that's all good. And this is, um, you know, I don't know. I would hope that it's more than accidental. Um, 
but the gear that you're shooting with is not up to the lighting conditions at this field. So we're going to do something about that. Well, oh, the lens. It's the lens. Huh? It's the lens. It's, you cannot be shooting this at F5. It's nighttime on a high school field, yeah. right? Can't do it. Cannot do I, mean, I think it was really helped out the fact that it was a black background because if it yeah. was behind that, it was yeah. so noisy. Yeah. Stuff, you know? Yeah. But, you know, let's, let's give Reed the benefit of the doubt and say that he meant to do this. Then you're making some progress. Um, yeah. But that lens, yeah, that think lens, this, this really, the lens really is going to hold you back. On, no? yeah. yeah. It's a really beautiful thing going on. I really yeah. love the color and everything. It's just really nice. And you know, the way, the way his body is like, you know, that could have gone, you know, both of his feet were on the ground or, you know, if he was twisted in a different direction or something, but the way his, the way his body is at an angle to the field, the way the one foot is completely, or the one leg is completely straight and the other one is mm -hmm. up and the two arms are out. Like that's all, you know, that's what we're looking for. Like that's, this kid looks athletic. Um, it's just too dark to shoot at F5. So. This you cannot shoot at night with this lens. Period. 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 Yeah. Um, that's it uh, for this month's the episode. It's the sixtieth training round. No, it's not the sixtieth. No, probably not. But it's, we just call it be sixty. So anyway, um, thank you for everyone who participated. You're brave people. Um, I think you know what to do for next month. Uh, if you want more information on Big Lens Fast Shutter, please go to BigLensFastShutter.com. If you have been participating in Training Round for a while, you know what's going on, and you obviously appreciate what we've been doing for you, because everything we provide you for is pretty much free, um, you could go to Patreon.com slash BLFS, and you can give us some money, because it's very good that you pay someone for a service that uh, you feel it is uh, valuable to your life. And that is P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash B-L-F-S. Please tell your friends, your neighbors, your enemies, your loved ones how great we are. Well, if you really believe that it is. And if it actually, you know, helps your sports photography. And um, I think I've actually done enough at this point now, so I'm going to stop, and that's going to go and drive on this new car and get into an accident again. So have a great, 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 great weekend. That. And yeah, have a good day. Bye, guys.